Uh, good afternoon and welcome to our workshop, uh, LED, the future of road lighting. My name is Chakrapop Vachara uh, from Department of Highways. I will be your moderator for the session. I'm thrilled to have you all today uh, as we embark on a journey to explore innova innovative advancement in uh, road lighting technology. As we all know, uh, lighting plays a crucial role in our daily lives especially when it comes in to ensuring safety and visibility on our roads. With the rapid development of LED technology, we are witnessing a transformation that promises the, to revol revolutionize the way we light our streets and highways. Today's event, we will delve into the numerous benefits of LED road lighting from energy efficiency, the cost saving to enhance durability, and environmental sustainability. We will hear from industry experts, uh, see cutting edge demonstration, and discuss the future trends that will shape the road lighting landscape. Thank you all for joining us today. Let's light the way to a brighter, safer, more sustainable future. Okay, now without further ado, let's get started. Let me introduce you to the first speaker today, uh, Mr. Benjamin Tan, right beside me. Uh, he's from, he's a, a commercial director, Southeast Asia from Schrader. Uh, the Schrader Group is a leading independent uh, outdoor lighting manufacturer and solution provider in the world with more than 2 million lighting points sold per year. The company employs over 2,600 people worldwide and has sales representatives in more than 70 countries. Ben, Mr. Benjamin here, currently oversees Schrader's Southeast Asian uh, commercial activities. He's, he is an experienced regional lighting solution professional with extensive experience in end-to-end -end lighting solution from manufacturing, customization, pre-sale and post-sale services. He engages with key stakeholders such as infrastructure owners, regulatory bodies, consultants to address evolving needs and addressing unique challenges in outdoor spaces. Please give a warm welcome uh, to Mr. Benjamin Tan. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Kun uh, Jirapop, for the uh, good introduction. Uh, okay, my name is Ben. Uh, I represent Shredder, like uh, Mr. Jirapop uh, mentioned. So I'm not too sure you guys hear about Shredder, but uh, we are a. Uh, let me see. Yes, we are a uh, outdoor lighting uh, specialist. So we dedicate our business in uh, connected smart lighting for the various segments. And uh, about 10 years ago, we started a company called Shredder Hyperion, fully dedicated to a connected lighting solution for the safety of the road lighting we sell, for the urban deco lighting, which is uh, one big part of our business. So I'm not too sure about Thailand. I do see some decorative, but uh, in Europe, in uh, other parts of the world, example, what you see in the picture, Shanghai Ban, they are using some uh, carefully selected decorative uh, post-op lantern to give the iconic look uh, for the urban spaces, so which is important part of our business. Uh, of course, first and foremost, a uh, tunnel is uh, due to safety. So we don't want a tunnel that has a strobophobic effects, that have a dark spot, and that compromises safety. So we promote uh, safe and sustainable tunnel design and most importantly we also help customers save a lot of money in tunnel maintenance and uh, finally area lighting is uh, another big part of business so i see in the picture recently we uh, lighted up a hong kong airport with uh, i think it's the whole airport using our light with a uh, anti glare lighting solution so that is the demand of the customer we make some customization we uh, minimize the tube to almost uh, five to ten degree so that you don't get spill light directly into the pilot's eye so that's a brief uh, introduction of the space we are in. So today's topic, so what we're talking today is uh, we're going to cover uh, something probably relevant to Thailand. So as you can see, Thailand is uh, not very uh, well uh, converted into LED outside of uh, BMA in uh, Bangkok. So for the highway itself, uh, probably people are thinking about just having the light to be connected. 
worthwhile and not all people are ready for a smart lighting solution. So, so we're going to cover this topic on uh, connected ready to smart lighting, a uh, whole spectrum of uh, customers that we're dealing with currently. So the topics, first uh, we talk about when people are not ready, we talk about connected ready. So getting the rate ready for the smart city. And next we talk about uh, connected and smart lighting that we have to offer. So one part of it we will talk about is uh, openness. So how open is your solution and how do you secure your platform and your uh, communication layers? So of course uh, with your uh, smart lighting installed, so you can think about additional savings. And the last topic I'm going to cover is probably not, uh, not quite relevant, a little bit relevant to the topic of smart lighting, but uh, it's obtrusive lighting, light that disturb people, disturb the environment. So it's a request from some of the, uh, our contacts here. <laughs> so our solution is uh, really smart, and we call it uh, smart lighting. So to us, we define smart as uh, simple, easy to, uh, easy to install, easy to commission. So for those who did uh, commission smart lighting before, you know the complexity, it can go, it can go very complex. We want something that is uh, modular. So you have an open system that you can uh, use different supplier of different uh, devices at different layer of the smart solution. So in that sense, you can have a plug and play and even integrate the party solution into our platform. And when you have that in place, we talk about automation. So this will help us take away uh, things that we, uh, the routine stuff that we do, so we can automate it. Um, of course, the system we deploy has to be resilient. So it's not solution for now, but we're talking about deploying a, a, a backbone or a structure for future expansion possibility as future proof. And last part is about trustability. So trust deals with two, two parts of it. One is, of course, the system has to be reliable. And next, it has to do with the security of a system. So cyber security is a big topic right now with the mounting a cyber attack. OK, but I'm not too sure what are you looking for in a smart system, but for ourselves in Shredder, so we uh, offer, firstly, energy saving like most uh, people do, very common. We have a dimming schedule. Uh, we allow you to have insightful reports to make decisions. And uh, next thing you do with a control system is that you can have an asset management. So you know how many lights are being installed. What can you do with the light? You can have a detection of failure pretty quickly with the system notification to ease your maintenance. Yep. And uh, of course, we move on to more advanced users. They want something uh, adaptive. So we have the possibility of dimming the light when you need it. And when you don't need the light, you dim it. And of course, you have future expansion that the road getting busy, you might not you might want to have a higher light level, so that is possible. And of course, some people think that uh, wildlife is important, so do us. So protecting wildlife is actually uh, possible with the lighting control, control system to, uh, to actually uh, remove some of the obstructive lighting, which we'll talk about as well. And flexibility, I mentioned a bit, that the uh, structure has to be for the future, flexible, allow expansion and uh, for future expansion. And most people don't realize that once you install a smart control system, you're actually deploying a network in the city. So it's the backbone of your control system. So with a backbone deployed, you can actually able to do many things to it, like adding sensors, getting more data, adding third party platform. So this is uh, what we have to offer. So first, uh, before you go there, I think uh, not everyone is ready. Some people are just in the stage of uh, just exploring to replace the LED like Thailand. <laughs> so some people like people, the Singapore Authority, they have already uh, replaced all the LED and they have already connected everything. And they are thinking of uh, automation or having adaptive lighting right now, as I was speaking to a Singapore uh, LTA uh, director earlier. So, so getting ready, uh, connected ready, which means you need to have your luminance uh, ready with uh, future possible connection. 
built into your Lumine. So by simply specifying, uh, putting in a, a standard socket like Nima and Zaga, and having a standard communication protocol like DALI or zero to 10 volt, whichever, no problem, they are all standard protocols. Or having a Zaga D4i certified Luminaire if you plan to use a Zaga D4i for your information bank. So a little bit of difference between NEMA and Zaga without dwelling into detail. So first in the NEMA is a very established solution, been around for more than a decade. So the difference is that the NEMA will have a power go directly into the socket and the controller and the power will be uh, channeled to the LED driver which in turn channeled to the LED. So for a Zaga, which is a European standard, recently uh, deployed a lot in Europe, so getting very popular. So what happened is that the, instead of having a big NEMA controller, so now the power goes straight to the LD driver. And the LD driver supply an auxiliary power to the control node or the socket. So this is the main difference. So of course, uh, both have their advantages and disadvantages. For the NEMA, you will see that the metering is done at the uh, control node level where the intelligence is. However, in the uh, Zaga uh, socket, you have the intelligence in the driver where we retrieve the data from the DALI bank in the uh, driver itself. So the next uh, big difference is that uh, for NEMA, you are free to use 0 to 10 volt DALI, uh, any dimming protocol. However, in Zaga, you can only use uh, DALI, uh, DALI 2 with a D4i uh, certified driver so that can retrieve information from the driver. Yep, so, well, so NEMA itself has got extra two pin as well for external sensor if you do require. So this is the basic architecture. So what is the architecture in our control system? So we have three layers uh, of architecture. First, we have the hardware where your luminaires or your smart columns and your sensors, CTV, these are a hardware platform you install on the field. Uh, next, we have a connected uh, platform that actually where your controllers sit talking to each other. And of course, the last layer we have is the software platform uh, where we have the uh, user interface uh, sitting there where you do all your controls and uh, visualization in that uh, layer. So very quickly, so when we choose a control system or what shredder we offer is that we have the uh, system that is open. Open meaning we only choose a standard open protocol like example for socket, NEMA and Zaga. For data wise, uh, we use a UCFI uh, data model, which is an uh, open standard, lightweight M2M, -M, as well as uh, we make sure it's, it is compatible to third party devices, which can communicate through all the devices. And very importantly, we uh, have this uh, consortium called uh, TOC, which we are active members. So this TOC comprises of uh, most IoT uh, players, serious players, big players that are all sitting in the consortium. So we are one of the members in the consortium. So people look at features, what your system can offer. So we can have multi-DALI, uh, last guess, important, I'll show a bit later, and dynamic lighting control, on, uh, on, off, dim, and all kinds of scenario. And we want a system that is uh, easy to deploy and uh, easy to commission. And next, uh, we talk about data, uh, important set. Uh, how do you manage your data? So we offer data management with analytics and reports, alarms, and data that allow uh, automation. So very importantly, uh, a lot of questions coming from uh, the security, not just the data, but through all the layers. So of course, uh, we'll elaborate a little bit more on uh, security in the later part. Ah, so this is uh, one little difference in uh, what you can expect from a shred system. We actually put a, a little power bank into our controller to allow you to identify whether it's a failure from a control system or failure from a power line. So it's very important in the modern days where we deploy control, you need to know who to send to fix a problem. <laughs> if you cannot differentiate which item fail, you have to send two person there. So it's a unique feature we learned from our experience that we decided that we put it in. <laughs> and a little bit on talk, so it's been around for more than 10 years. So as I say, uh, more than 80% of the important uh, players in the public uh, 
public uh, lighting industry is in the platform, in the consortium. So the means it is currently probably the main standard in the market for uh, such application in outdoor uh, IoT application. So there's two types of certification in talk. So first we talk about the talk gateway. So in Shredder, we has uh, make sure all products conform to the uh, talk and we get the certification for the gateway as well as the CMS. So uh, we have two var variant of uh, control node. So one is uh, the NEMA base and Zaga base, which I explained earlier. So they serve different markets. So for the uh, People who are used to NEMA and it's been around for a long time is trusted, reliable. Of course, they can continue to use the NEMA, which make a big part of our business outside of Europe. And for European market, uh, they have moved into D4Y for most of the market. So, yeah. So how does our control uh, system architecture work? So from the bottom layer, you see our outlet uh, mesh node is a YSAM mesh deploy. And we have a data leaf, like a mini gateway. So we deploy approximately one is to 10. So this is to reduce uh, deployment cost. So compared to having every control node having a SIM card, for example, a gateway to communicate. So the cost saving is quite significant. So we have the mesh layer and uh, data lift to bring the layer to the uh, Azidra platform, which sits on the cloud. And it communicate through a cellular network. So next is the platform. It's probably, probably the most important brain of our whole control system. So yeah, the way to look at it is to look at it into four aspects. First, at the top, you will see a user interface. So that's where uh, someone using the system look at the computer, at the screen, and they can look at the energy report. They know exactly how many lights they have, uh, what to do with the light, and set some automation. So this is where the user interface the system. So of course, uh, where does the info come from? It came from the data intelligence. So you can see that we are using Microsoft. The logo is there, uh, Microsoft as well, uh, as a provider of data intelligence. So the software sits there together with data to make data intelligence so that user can use it uh, intelligently. Uh, on, the, on the left, you see the uh, interfacing with the infrastructure. So these are all the hardware. So yes, and you can see a little logo there called UCFI. This is the data model we adopt. So it's an open protocol. So instead of using a proprietary uh, communication, we decided to go with a standardized uh, and open protocol. So we can seamlessly talk to other systems as well. And on the right, which is the last part, you look at interfacing platform. So this is a growing segment, and uh, we are looking, we are spending a lot of time in uh, R and D into this portion. So, for example, you have other platforms like, uh, for example, Google, Google Maps providing uh, data on location, providing traffic data. You have weather data from, for example, acute uh, weather. So this data, they have their own platform, so we can easily interface with their platform as long as they are in the top com uh, consortium. So, uh, how to ensure easy deployment? Like I mentioned, uh, we don't have a few gateway which uh, require much more effort in commissioning. So instead of having a gateway, we have a data leaf that brings the data to the cloud. For, to our uh, yep, to our platform. So a system without gateway is uh, much more easier to deploy, especially small deployment which you need to scale up later. So we also offer a plug and play solution. So first of all, we when you install the node, you have an auto detection. Uh, it starts to test itself to make sure they are connected, they are ready. And of course, we have a geolocation with GPS located there to tell exactly where the location is. You auto connect, it, it will start testing itself on of them, and you can see in your user interface. And of course, the last, part, last gap, which I uh, mentioned, is an important feature uh, that you will consider having. So next question you might ask is that, uh, how do I integrate a third-party sensor into your uh, platform? So of course, uh, for us using uh, open standards like uh, TOC, uh, Zaga D4i, uh, Wi-Sun, Lightweight M2M, so it allows you to have wired wireless uh, integration seamlessly with the uh, APIs. 
So which are the open standard we use? So we mentioned talk for all the controllers. So while we can eliminate all the proprietary costs having to work with a proprietary solution to get their APIs, some are not very cooperative. So if you are in the talk consortium, so APIs are made available. And API itself, we're using REST, uh, HTTP uh, technologies uh, is the most common one. And Wysun Alliance, fully dedicated for outdoor applications, started with a smart grid and now we use in lighting and proven reliable over time with a very low power consumption. And DALI and D DALI D4i, so these is our standard uh, protocol for LD drivers. Yes, open, but uh, is it secure? That's the next question. So it's important to make sure that our system gets certification based on ISO 27001. So it basically certifies to make sure your confidentiality is protected when people accessing the data, right to access. Uh, you have integrity of system where people can change the information. Uh, they are restricted. And of course, availability is important, not restrictive. That the, the person who needs the info will get the info they need. So yes, we are happy to say that all our system are certified ISO 27001, so you can trust our system in terms of security. So security is not just in uh, one layer or at the uh, platform or at the data. So we have security at the, all the three different layers. So starting from device layer, so we do have a key management system to give a unique uh, device identity at the factory level. We secure the booting to make sure they only boot with certain software. Uh, example, uh, also having a regular uh, secure uh, firmware, uh, over, the, over the air firmware update as well. And uh, in the commission layer, so this we use Ysun. Ysun is uh, probably uh, more reliable, secure with the uh, TLS 128. So beat uh, security encryption, so it's very secure. And in the data app layer, we trusted uh, Microsoft, so we trust our emails and our working system with Microsoft, so we're using exactly the same system, yeah. So how can control helps uh, additional saving? So uh, with street light management system uh, fully deployed, now we can talk about adaptive lighting. So to use light when they are needed and to dim light when they are not needed. And of course, we can put some automation to it and we can set some alarm and uh, precisely identify issue to save our maintenance costs. So, wow, uh, too much talking from me. I let my colleague, <laughs> uh, Barak, uh, from, uh, Best, from Germany to talk about a, a short case study about the uh, deployment of automation. Automation and data insights. The city faced three key challenges. Optimize its energy consumption, efficiently manage its maintenance operation, and easily expand its network. Enter Schrader Excedra, a smart lighting solution that uses real-time traffic monitoring to dynamically adjust the street lighting levels, striking a balance between safety and energy savings. In doing so, it provides insightful data that allows the city to verify energy savings and continuously improve its lighting network. With real-time data on its lighting infrastructure, the city boosts maintenance efficiency, resolving issues instantly without wasting resources. As the city's lighting grows, Trader Etc. brings automation to the fore, seamlessly detecting, commissioning, and integrating new luminaires, greatly simplifying the process. Thanks to Schrader Etc.'s automation capabilities and insights, the city of Bad Hersfeld has cut maintenance costs, seamlessly expanded its smart street lighting network, and reduced its energy consumption by more than 70%. So next uh, saving we're going to do is uh, saving with alarm. So by setting alarm, so that give us a, a notification of failures and you can fix it faster and you know exactly what fail and that will help to save money. And of course, uh, with street light management uh, system, so of course there's uh, increasing talk about using artificial intelligence in the street light. So uh, that has been uh, seriously looked into and we do have some uh, case study already using artificial intelligence in uh, Germany. So, well, we uh, won't elaborate here. So 
Okay, we can uh, create uh, calendars and dimming profiles. So only start the light, for example, in the case you see 100% in probably seven o'clock and start dimming it and we start dimming it up again towards the end of the day. So of course, next thing we do is we can uh, elevate the saving by connecting sensors to it. So having sensors to automatically detect uh, when the light is needed and giving uh, information to the system. And automation, setting automation, um, let the control system manage a routine task of the lighting in a wind structure. Uh, you will receive a notification on uh, such uh, notices on the automation. So this is an example of uh, how an example of automation work in a shredder light sync, which is our uh, automation services that we provide currently. So on the left, you can see that uh, we have all the different uh, information, traffic data, weather, noise, people, information available in the crowd through uh, API. We can actually uh, put the information, put the information into our shredder Azedra platform, where we have the algorithm to actually compute uh, what kind of light levels to to provide? Example, heavy traffic with a bad weather, it goes to 100%. Just a simple analogy. And they will adapt accordingly. So, uh, in terms of AI now, so you see in AI, we need data, uh, a lot of data for it to work and we need the algorithm. So we do have the algorithm in place to implement AI. So while well, we've accumulated data, we can expect a better accuracy. So with insufficient data at this moment, uh, the predictability is uh, not very high. So it's at the trial stage. Well, what it means simply is that once uh, AI is implemented, the system can actually react itself, uh, create an automation and scenario and actually implement the scenario without human and intervention, which the word artificial intelligence is. So, of course, you have the choice to set notification if you need a notification before they change the scene. So, so last topic, uh, I'm going to take the last three minutes to cover this topic called obtrusive lighting. So, these are lights that we don't want and they disturb us, not just us, the environment or animals. So, what do we have here? So you can see this loop are obviously disturbing uh, the people there. So first you have a glare coming from somewhere in the top left. In the second picture, you see uh, some obtrusive lighting coming into your room. And of course, the last one is a picture to internet is a uh, Putabak Pechaban in Thailand. Pachabut. So thank you. So we call this a uh, sky glow where they light up the sky and you can't really see the star. <laughs> So this is an issue. <laughs> so where are the light coming from? So as you can see on the left, these are the street light having spill light into the houses that created glare. And next you can see the light coming from a far away light source, probably from a stadium, uh, having spots light at night. So it goes straight into your room if you're too near. And of course, uh, the lights from the pet <laughs> Putabak Pechabun in Thailand uh, come from the street. Uh, so in Shredder, we do have a whole range of photometry. You need to choose the right light to make sure you light up only where it's needed. However, if you still do not have a, you still have issues with a obtrusive lighting, so these are the common solution that people adopt to cut the unwanted light away. So you can see people put external louvers uh, all around and the back. People put uh, internal louvers inside the uh, LEDs, a uh, row reflector to block individual row of light. And of course, uh, we put hood in spot lighting to control the light spilling to people's home. So these are standard solution. So uh, anyway, obtrusive light, uh, you can refer to IS EN12193 uh, 2019. So they have guidelines on the class of obtrusive lighting. So, uh, next thing I want to introduce uh, to the audience is the uh, backlight control. So, uh, this deals with light we doesn't want that goes back. So, in Thailand, there's a, there's a very uh, interesting user case which was brought to uh, me. So, we do come with some solution. Uh, I'll talk about it a bit later. So, as you can see, uh, backlight, we cut away the light, there's no need. But the primary application is... Uh, uh, not application. So this is how we control backlight. Individual LED are being shoot 
with a, a shield. So we can't just put a shield. So obviously we did our R&D to make sure as we are blocking the light, we are not affecting the light output and maintain the efficiency, which is extremely important. Um, these are some photometry you can look at the uh, polar diagram. So for the top, just uh, with a normal lens, you can still see light spilling to the back. And with a standard backlight control, we manage to cut the main bar of the back unwanted light away. And of course, we have a new model called Backlight Maxi, where we can have a almost total blackout of the light spill to the rear. So this is the picture uh, you can see on the three application. So of course, the backlight maxi really cut away all the light from the rear. So we have an application like reverse facade, the uh, nature, or in Thailand, rice field is uh, very important. So light does affect the uh, rice field. So you can see artificial light falling into the rice field. So it's not good. So it disrupts the plant uh, growth cycle. It uh, altered the pest uh, behavior. They probably start munching the plants in the night. And you have uh, changes in uh, microbial uh, soil activities. So that's not good for uh, the rice field. So of course, I mentioned that if you want to cut away the unwanted light, you need to do it carefully and with a proper R&D, not just simply putting something to block the light. So with careful R&D, as you can see the picture here, uh, on the left side of the road, the backlights are all taken away. So while we still have all the lights falling into the road where we need the light. So some performance will be reduced because uh, you are cutting, reducing the light. And of course, the uh, cost will increase in terms of energy, in terms of uh, product wattage should be higher. So of course, uh, one other part of things uh, we can do to reduce uh, issues of uh, oxygen lighting, and this is a sky glow example. So in France, uh, well, I think the design is uh, over littered, so you, it results in a lot of spill light up, uh, or sky glow. So we do a good uh, light output ratio change by doing a dimming. So you can see the spill light are not, uh, the upward spill light has been reduced. So without changing the light. So this example of uh, uh, importance of a good design, not to uh, have too much unwanted light in your design. So I think this will be my last slide, uh, Dark Sky International. So um, we promote using uh, dark sky friendly uh, lights. Uh, do, ref do visit the Dark Sky International website. Uh, they do dedicate uh, specifically for outdoor lighting to make sure you can see the stars again. <laughs> uh, thank you so much. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Uh, because uh, this session has no translator, so I just a uh, quick uh, summary to in Thai for the some of the other audience to understand. Kun Kun Benjamin Jack Trader ก็ได้เล่าให้เราฟังนะครับสำหรับ LED สมัยใหม่เนาะไฟฟ้าไฟฟ้าแสงสว่างนะครับที่เป็นไฟถนนสมัยใหม่จะเป็นแบบ connected นะครับก็คือเชื่อมโยงกันหมดนะครับมันจะมีระบบที่เชื่อมโยงกันไปที่คลาวนะครับระบบสมัยใหม่เนี่ยไม่ต้องใส่ซิมทุกทุกตัวก็ได้นะก็จะสามารถเชื่อมโยงกันได้นะนอกจากจะเชื่อมโยงได้แล้วยังสามารถให้ความปลอดภัยในเชิงเซคิวริตี้ได้ด้วยเพราะว่าเรายิ่งสะดวกมากขึ้นเท่าไหร่เนี่ยเรารู้ว่าไฟตรงไหนดับนะครับในความทางกลับกันก็มันก็มีความไม่ปลอดภัยในเชิงไซเบอร์ด้วยนะครับก็ความปลอดภัยในเชิงไซเบอร์ก็สําคัญครับสุดท้ายก็คุณเบนจามินก็เล่าให้ฟังเรื่อง obstructive light คือแสงที่มันกวนการหลับนอนการการที่เรานอนที่บ้านแสงเข้ามาทางหน้าต่างหรือแม้กระทั่งประเทศไทยเนี่ยเรามีปัญหามากเรื่องเราไปติดแสงไฟแสงสว่างที่อยู่อยู่กับทุ่งนาซึ่งมีอยู่จํานวนมากนะครับทำให้ข้าวไม่ตั้งท้องเรามีปัญหาเรื่องนี้ในกรมทางหลวงแล้วก็ถนนของประเทศไทยเนี่ยก็นั่งเยอะนะครับก็ตัวเทคโนโลยีสายใหม่เขาสามารถดีไซน์หรือบังคับให้แสงนะพุ่งไปตรงจุดที่เราต้องการอย่างเดียวไม่ไม่เป็นระบบมลภาวะทางแสงได้ด้วยนะครับก็ประมาณนี้ผมคงพูดได้ไม่ละเอียดทั้งหมดเพราะเขพูดตั้งยาวเนาะแต่ก็เดี๋ยวจะพอจะได้ตามกันทันนะครับ Uh, let's move on to the next speaker. Okay, Mr. Ng Yong Liang from Signify. Okay, he is a global segment manager, road and street cities, uh, professional business system and services. Mr. Yong Liang is the segment manager for city segment. He is responsible for cities, road, street system and services. Uh, proposition globally and charts, the strategy, portfolio, and roadmap of smart city propositions. He's supported by a team of product managers, developers, and system experts who are spread across multiple countries in Europe, India, China, and Americas. He's been in the lighting industry for 23 years 
and currently in his 13 years with Signify. His professional career span across sales, product, and business management pro pro positions. Please give a warm welcome to Mr. Yong Liang. Thank you for the very nice introduction. Uh, I'm Yong Liang, I'm the sub-segment manager for City in the public segment in Signify. And today I will share a little bit uh, about uh, our offering for connected smart street lighting. Um, can we move? Oh, sorry. Yeah, so allow me to share a little bit more about the company firstly. I think many of you in Thailand uh, is familiar with Philips and Philips Lighting. And since about eight years ago, uh, Philips Lighting has become Signify. And we are, we are and still is the world leader in lighting. Um, a few metrics. Right? Last year, our sales total globally 6.7 billion euros, and that puts us number one for conventional lighting, for LED, and also for system and services. Globally, we employ about 32,000 employees, and we are a house of brands. So Philips on the left is one of the bigger brands, of course. Then there are other sub-brands. I think some of you who have used uh, Hue at home would be familiar with Hue. Uh, and that's also, of course, under the Philips umbrella. And uh, with color kinetics, so a lot of the facade lighting for retail hospitality on bridges where there are color-changing dynamic light shows, those come from the color kinetics portfolio. And Interact and Talenza are two brands that we offer for connected street lighting. Sustainability at the bottom is one of the key focus for the company as well. For many years, in fact, for seven years, we have been uh, listed on the Dow Jones Sustainability Index and co we continue to be there. Also, uh, we are uh, ranked uh, top 1% for Ecovadis achieving the platinum status. So that uh, continue to be our main uh, and key focus uh, going forward. So on the right, you will see also uh, we are leading by example, right? Having been uh, uh, then now uh, ranked high for uh, platinum and also top one percent with Ecovadis, we have done quite a few things as well on our own. We have already reduced more than seventy percent of our operational carbon footprint. Also. 90% of our manufacturing uh, waste are recyclable. And also, um, we have shifted uh, in all our factories and manufacturing plants 100% renewable electricity. So that's uh, in our small ways, uh, some of the efforts we've put in. Now, coming back, um, a few points, right? Cities are facing a lot of challenges. Huh? The main one we see is the energy crisis or the energy challenge. Um, there are a lot of electrical, electric vehicles that are being adopted globally and more and more devices are being used and charged by electricity. And therefore, in any home or any city, right, this use of electricity is increasing rapidly. Of course, city is also then um, at the same time challenged with climate crisis and economic crisis. Many people are moving to cities. There are uh, jobs, fewer jobs. In fact, uh, people are making uh, more uh, efficient uh, their, their job roles. So uh, there's uh, a lot of this uh, economic crisis where cities are competing with each other. Now, energy crisis is one that the in the public sector you can deal with directly. That said, in particular for energy in the city, lighting is a large part of what happens in the public space. And if you look at lighting, it spans across all over the city. Now, some of the examples are here in transportation hubs, in bridges, monuments, uh, landmarks, parks and plazas, uh, central business districts, waterfronts, um, downtown, even in residential areas, it's lighting everywhere. So therefore, in terms of um, looking at how we can uh, improve the challenge of energy, lighting would be one of the areas as a public municipality or road authority can look at. And of course, the easiest thing to do is to switch off all the lights, right? But the fact is that light is one of the lives essential. It cannot be just turned off, right? It will have a devastating impact on safety, on well-being, and even motivation and people's feelings uh, uh, on living in the city. So we cannot just turn off lights. Now, that is not, of course, uh, the, 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 the end of uh, uh, what we can do, right? So for, in terms of lighting, we started with conventional lighting with incandescent, for example, and then moving to halogen. 
we've moved to LED about 15 years ago already. So a lot of the uh, new lights are all uh, made of uh, LED, and there are good benefits to LED. Now, um, LED also has come to a point where it's scaling very quickly. And we are going into a next step of the evolution in this lighting industry where systems or connected systems for lights are being implemented and adopted. Uh, and finally, of course, uh, once these uh, lights are connected with digital lighting, including LED, then you are able to uh, then manage a lot of the data, analyze the data, and do probably a lot more than just uh, what traditional lighting can do. The key point here is who can scale better? Scaling is absolutely critical. And we've learned it also uh, um, in the past 15, 20 years on connected lighting uh, that we have uh, started already about 15 years ago. Now, so therefore, switching to LED is already a no-brainer, right? So city um, use about 78% of the global energy consumption and 40% of that is lighting related. So converting from conventional to LED could save already up to 50%. That is already a no-brainer. Now, the next jump would be that these lights being digital with LED can be connected and managed remotely, centrally, and that could essentially save an addition 20 to 30%, depending on what else the city municipality or the governments allowed to do. So you can essentially save up to 80% with connected lighting. Now, of course, if you talk to any city, they have a big smart city plan, right? All of them, many of them have, you know, um, plans that they want to make the city very smart, connect everything. But that is, of course, um, uh, technologies that need to come together, and over time, it, they will get there. However, today, what we can do most immediately is to connect the lighting uh, infrastructure, which is right at the bottom. So start first with connected smart uh, street lighting. Some of the key benefits listed here, I think it's quite obvious, right? Uh, reduce energy consumption up to 80%, which uh, con consequently also results in uh, CO2 uh, emission savings. Um, operational efficiency, you can save up to 50% now that you don't need to do scouting. The faults on connected streetlights can already be tracked uh, online uh, uh, remotely in the application. Uh, you can, of course, reduce downtime by right, the fact that you can fix faults very quickly as soon as they are known. And with better lighting, of course, uh, safety aspects uh, in the city, uh, reduction of uh, accidents uh, will be a consequence of it. And uh, studies have shown that with better lighting, you could reduce crime by 20% and reduce road accidents by 30%. Um, beyond that, of course, uh, if you have sensors connected to the lighting uh, asset or the lighting infrastructure, then you can go beyond what lighting uh, normally does. Right? For example, you know, gathering some of these uh, data, uh, for example, ambient noise, ambient temperature, uh, that will allow a city to look at what's happening in the city and build some of these uh, strategies around uh, um, this data that is coming through. Um, data protection is important. My colleague here uh, spoke about uh, ISO 27001. Uh, here we have two certifications here, 62443 and ISO 27001. So any system that you choose to run your public infrastructure certainly needs to be very secure. And it's important to look for a partner, uh, a vendor that has these uh, in place. And finally, the last point here is about uh, managing the demand, uh, peak demand for electricity grid. Uh, I spoke earlier about this energy crisis in city. So as more and more uh, appliances, electricity is being used uh, in, in any city, in any home, the demands on the electricity infrastructure in terms of the power stations, the transformers are increasingly very, very high. In some cities, uh, for example, in Philippines, we also hear from time to time, during the peak load hours, the, um, some of the um, city experience a brownout in certain parts of the city. Now, if you have direct control over your public infrastructure, that would be one way of reducing at peak demand some of the electricity consumption that comes from public lighting, which is completely manageable uh, and in control by the um, city municipality or the road authority. So our offering comes in two form or two product lines, Talenza and Interact. Globally, we have over 6.4 million light points connected already. It's been a 15-year journey. 
So both, uh, we've been around for about 15 years, 2.6 million from Talenza, and with Interact, we have 3.8 million connected so far, spread across many cities uh, globally everywhere, and for Interact uh, or Interact City, we are um, deployed in over 60 countries and counting. Okay, that said, over the past 15, 20 years when we first started, we learned a lot, actually, with a lot of engagements with, this, uh, with many cities and uh, knowing their requirements. We know that city is looking for flexibility in the solution and also future readiness with upgradability. Now, if you look at flexibility, what are they looking for? Of course, asset management is key, right? It's hygiene fundamental and remote control monitoring of street lights fundamental. But they also want flexibility. In any system, they would like to have individual light point connected as well as group cabinet all in the same application. So they have flexibility in terms of, okay, where we deploy individual light point. Like, for example, in the city center, that, that uh, those areas, they want to have uh, a very uh, accurate information about uh, the health of the system or the, uh, that the lights are up. But on a highway over long stretch, maybe the group cabinet solution is better and uh, in this way with the flexibility they can clearly optimize the deployment across the city uh, from both the economic um, perspective and also from a management perspective uh, with the system. Uh, coupled with that, then uh, we also looked into, okay, some of the sensing elements that they're looking for, we release our own outdoor multi-sensor and that comes with several sensing modalities which I will share in the next, next few pages. Open system, so the flexibility of being open and connect the lighting CMS to any other CMS or dashboard, that would be one of the fundamentals needed by any city as well. There is today no one system that can do it all, so there will be a combination of many different systems coming together into a dashboard, into analytics, into using those information coming through multiple channels, making adaptive lighting decisions, etc. So openness is absolutely critical. And we do openness on two fronts, one on the hardware front and next on the software front. Um, multiple languages, of course, eh, wherever we go, over 60 countries, uh, they would like to have the language localized. That, will, that of course, uh, has been done already for many countries. On future readiness, OTA, um, over-the-air firmware updates, very critical. We, we actually learned it from uh, many years of this deployment across different projects that whenever there's a new feature, we need to do a firmware update over uh, the air towards uh, the install base already. Um, it's very critical that the installed devices is able to accept these new firmware updates. Therefore, the selection of the communication technology as well as the hardware built in to cater for this updated firmware that grows over time, it's absolutely critical. So some of the features that I listed here, we say energy uh, outage or main power failure, the last gas uh, that my colleague mentioned, also the memory uh, bank read from the LED driver, reading asset information from the street light. Those are new features that are uh, already available uh, today and more importantly security patches so we spoke about security in the system but on the product level security vulnerability is growing every day so in the device level we also need to ensure that the device firmware is secure so this firmware update is important to ensure that these security patches uh, can be done remotely cloud software so it allows Again, these features to be upgraded very easily across multiple projects, multiple customers. Um, very important to have that capability. And uh, the last two points are about Zaga D4i. So this is the growing uh, standard that many vendors have adopted. Um, uh, Zaga being the hardware interface uh, on the node types, for example, and D4i being the DALI interface in terms of the communication protocol. And we have all our portfolio, whether it's street lights or the connector nodes, both uh, Zaga and Zaga D4i certified. A quick overview of our uh, architecture of the connected uh, street lights. So at the bottom right, you will see the individual light points connected via the RF mesh communication architecture, uh, as well as the, the direct cellular communication architecture. So both of these connect into the server in the middle uh, uh, cloud that is in pink. Now on the uh, RF mesh, 
we have adopted this uh, mesh technology on sub gigahertz. Some of you who are familiar with radio, 2.4 gigahertz are uh, widely used uh, for Bluetooth, for Wi-Fi, for Zigbee communications. But these are very crowded, open uh, uh, communication protocols that may cloud a lot of these communication uh, that uh, need to happen between the nodes and the, the server. So we've gone into sub gigahertz where we have three times the range and a lot more stable uh, in the ISM band, uh, the, the short-range devices band that is also unlicensed and free. Um, that's it. Um, it uh what we have adopted with sub gigahertz is that one gateway or one uh, segment controller can connect to a thousand. So it is a very efficient way uh, and cost effective way of connecting street lights very quickly, one to a thousand. Above this individual light point, you have group cabinet uh, that we can connect these groups of cabinet via these electrical cabinets that, I that is easily applied across long stretches of roads, for example, the highway I talked about. Then from the cloud, we expose data through APIs and also through the top gateway or the fireware uh, gateway platform. And those will go into the different verticals or dashboard that will have all these other verticals coming together, including also, for example, integration with the city's backend um, uh, uh, services such as SAP, financial, billing, invoicing, as well as task management, issuing of work order management to uh, few workers. Uh, these are all the different systems that come together. Uh, on a much bigger smart city platform. Plug and play, um, auto commissioning, so that's also one of the key features that we have deployed in our system where a few device is connected and the marker or the device itself appears directly in the application without any field scanning necessary. So that's one of the key features that allows us to deploy very quickly. Um, service tech, we have a QR code that is attached onto every luminaire that you can scan with a tool that allows you to see all the asset information, including the components and the replacement parts available for that particular luminaire. That's also, of course, part of uh, what we provide uh, as data that can be uploaded into the interface. And this is a bit of a snapshot on our user interface, Interact City. Uh, we've been award the, awarded the IF uh, Design Award in 2021, and it continues to grow. It's a very uh, intuitive uh, user interface, um, yeah. And this is the Zaga uh, D4i um, um, certification page. Essentially, Zaga D4i is a standard that allows interoperability of different components in the street lights. So from the connector node to a CMS, to the street light, the driver inside, as well as a bottom Zaga socket that can house a bottom sensor. So it allows this interoperability of the, these different components coming together and talking to each other in the DALI protocol. Okay. And with that, noting that there are very few vendors today that has released a Zaga D4i certified sensor, we release our outdoor multi-sensor. It comes with several sensing modalities. Motion sensing with radar is one of them. This is a few rotatable uh, radar sensor that um, detects motion. So when, a, uh, when it's installed in, at site, under the street light, it can uh, allow this um, uh, dim override, dimming override uh, directly to the street light when uh, motion is detected at site. Okay, that's it. It can work standalone, so this is a standalone example, and it can also be networked. So it's not only an individual sensor, but it can be networked together with neighboring street lights and create either a group. For example, in a car park, you can create a whole group with sensing on motion and the whole group will light up at the same time when there's motion. Or you can create these groups where you have a light trail, for example, on, on a cycling track. So a person cycling through the track can have the light following the, the cycling path. Now, when it is connected to Interact City, then it works together with the program calendar in Interact City. So the multi-sensor, first of all, is a radar sensor that does motion, so that's more lighting data. It can override the DIM programs. But at the same time, when it's connected to Interact City, it has safety um, notifications such as tilt and uh, impact a notification fault. So if there's an accident knocking the pole over or the luminaires are out of position, so the tilt fault information will be sent to the CMS. The uh, operator will be able to uh, notify uh, few workers, technician to go to site and fix the problem uh, immediately. And urban data beyond that. So it's got ambient noise and ambient temperature data information that uh, can be captured from the street light and sent back to 
the uh, central server. And these are uh, the visualization that we see in Interact City, where on the left you see noise data coming through, and on the right you see temperature data for one day and for seven days, and etc. You can select the duration you want to see. Uh, outdoor um, uh, multi-sensor will, will detect these uh, uh, data sampling in 15 minute cycle within that 15, 15 minute block and of course this data can be exported through CSV or APIs for further analytics. These are the two certificates uh, that we have. So 62443 is the certification for security product design process. So from a design perspective we have already built in the way we build our products for security. And of course then uh, at the bottom you see this ISO 27001. So fully covered for cyber security. Um, we, uh, of course, 15 years experience, we have been ranked uh, three times in a row by uh, Guidehouse Insights as the leader for smart street lighting on execution and strategy. So you see the top right hand corner uh, amongst uh, the rest of the competing uh, brands uh, in the market. So we are very proud to be uh, there and we uh, hope the next version we will still be there. Uh, and next, I have a few slides on some of the projects we've done. This is for Buenos Aires, Argentina. 91,000 is now 95,000 connected with RF Mesh. Uh, since 2015, we have already uh, deployed these 95,000. So far, they've saved up to 75% energy consumption. In New York State, up to half a million, 500,000 will be converted to LED and connected. And they have also saved up to 70% uh, uh, LED. Uh, energy consumption. Uh, in Cardiff, uh, 14,000 um, uh, already uh, deployed. In Guadal uh, Guadalajara in Spain, uh, this is one project that we have combined individual light point as well as cabinet, 13,500 um, light points uh, connected. Uh, in uh, Portugal, with a service provider, CIMAC, uh, that uh, we have converted 55,000 uh, light points um, Oh, did I? Yeah, sorry here. So 55,000 uh, already converted to LED and about uh, 30,000 of them are connected. Uh, lastly, my, my last slide, I believe, uh, Jakarta, uh, with whom uh, we have DKI here, very proud to have them here. We have over 150,000 connected streetlights deployed. And um, if I'm not mistaken, the first 90,000 took only about seven months deployment and that is on the basis of plug and play auto commissioning. We were able to deploy 90,000 in seven months very quickly because of this plug and play capability and that was done with the average about four to five hundred street lights per day. Um, so this is a very good example of uh, some of the capabilities we have uh, built into our system. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Yong Liang. It's a very thoroughly presentation. Uh, I just uh, quick uh, summarize them up. อ่าก็ทางซินิฟายได้เล่าให้ฟังนะครับว่าระบบของซินิฟายก็เค้าเค้าลงแบรนด์หลายๆแบรนด์เค้าไว้ด้วยกันนะครับก็เป็นระบบ
Mr. Eri is the head of street at Public Lighting Facility Division Head, Agency for Jakarta Capital City Government. He handles planning, construction, and development of public street lighting in Jakarta provinces. Uh, he has 26 years of experience in public street lighting infrastructure. Also with uh, Mr. Kasali, he's uh, Mr. Ha Harley Citrus. Uh, he's a subgroup leader, uh, development and uh, logistics for street and public lighting facilities. Uh, Mr. Halley uh, handles planning, research, and development of public street lighting in Jakarta province. He had 13 years of experience in public street lighting infrastructure. Please, please. Thank, <clears throat> thank you. Sawa Dikap. Good app. <laughs> Good afternoon, everybody. Nice to be here with you. Uh, I, I would like to uh, uh, present uh, uh, about smart street lighting program pioneering Indonesia smart city adoption. Next. The DKI Jakarta began implementing the smart city concept since 2015. Then, since 2017, the implementation and development of smart cities has been increased in courage in other big cities in Indonesia through the ministerial institution that handle. Next. Smart City is one of the city development concept based on information technology which is created for an efficient and effective common purpose. In the applying Smart City concept, there are several factors in need to improvement. One of them is being smart government. Smart government concept has several basic principles become reference in applying the smart city concept, such as one, to improve, improve all lawyers of community, two, to develop operation to be more efficient, three, to increase organizational management, management sorry, who human resources and infrastructure for to create a public access database system five to pro to process up to date data data system uh, or real time six to utilize cutting edge technologies and seven to coordinate stakeholder Smart City concept in DKI Jakarta uh, uh, are smart government, smart people, smart living, smart mobility, smart economy, and smart environment. To realize, to realize smart city implementation, we use we using IoT for smart lighting, smart parking, smart smart electricity waste management and connecting hole for utility or ducting. Today, please let me share you focusing about experience in implementing smart lighting project in DKI Jakarta. The general and major problem background why me implementing this project is one high electricity energy usage and cost for public lighting two many many dark area risking public safety and city live 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 livability sorry three in efficient supervision and operational mechanism Four, 
long refire service period leading to delay response to citizen complaint. Five, use non environmental friendly light. That I believe we all here also experience it after problem inventory. We doing gradual a replacement of like with the cluster system or grouping system and also network arrangement and energy meter installation. So you can see the slide. By the end of 2023, Jakarta municipality operates in total uh, 300 and uh, 12,464 uh, light point. All of them have been smart street lighting as connected to centralized smart city platform increasing year by year since its trial starting in 2015. Uh, you can see the about uh, 61.8 increase of strict light coverage uh, versus 20 and 23, about 39.2% increase to street light coverage before uh, versus 20 and 13. And of uh, 20 and 20 and 23 as shown in the graphic. Okay. The table uh, show the progress number of smart lighting installation in DKI Jakarta since we starting the immersive installation project in 2016. Okay. Many testifying result we experience of the project more bright, minimize carbon dioxide pollution, but the mayor is efficient of electricity bill payment more than 40% 40, 40 as shown the, the graphic. So we can spend the budget be more, become more like point to increase the like spread for public services. The implementation, implementation strictly considered the nation standard for strike, street lightning from the Ministry of Transportation Indonesia Republic, replacing their conventional light to become LED smart lighting. Okay. Procurement st strategy is uh, means like control plus connectivity plus services combined under its technology provider. This is strategy simply, simply says procurement, less maintenance connect complexity, easier vendor management, and results result oriented and ensure full liability and compatibility toward its technology providers. is also prescribed pre by LKVP, our National Procurement Agency, to drive the most competitive offering. Philip or Sigmai signify has the largest install Serdu to their compliance in LKPP, large production capacity and installation, plus commissioning speed in the Mayer procurement year of 26 and 16 and 20 and 17.
we also adjusting weight of working and operation by reduced third party contracting caused by going self-managed asset through connected platform and impasse in a proper tool and equipment to support self-management operation. In 2016, uh, about uh, 89,000 and 4,017 4, connected like point were installed, connected and commissioned within seven months in 2016 or 425 light point per day. We embrace open platform with integration to Jakarta Smart City main dashboard as shown, as shown on the slide picture. This is the single dashboard in the DKI Jakarta. We also have single dashboard application, a system for the standard standardization if the smart lighting monitoring platform that can access by post officer into one application dashboard. You can see the swan before high energy, high cost way to, to improve improver like application of the street, one size fit all approach. Then after lower energy cost due to energy saving technology with configurable timing according to time and traffic condition. Uh, before difficult to operate or and higher operation cost uh, and now uh, we easier easier to operate with less resources uh, we have before difficult to plan part and component due to lack of accurate asset data and now we easier part and common planning due to due to connected real time asset data we have before higher citizen complain due to failure and so respond time and now we improve citizen service with online asset failure information uh, we have before inaccurate energy billing fully relevant to utility company Mia Surman. Now we can check energy billing with matter function in its light. Uh, we have before lack of fiscal room due to high cost of energy and operation. Expanding strict corporates is challenging. Now we are open up fiscal room to reinvest in many other areas to of a development, including expanding strike light, strict light coverage. This is the picture of uh, many pool in Jakarta. We have two pool, uh, one pool with two light, and and many uh, the, the many many apa bentuk many variant next uh, this is visualization Jakarta now uh, as you can see uh, Salemba Street and Merdeka Timur Street Ridu Anura is is uh, very very uh, wide and we uh, we we can uh, manage the like lanjut uh, in uh, this is juga this is visualization of RGB we have strict lighting 
specialized in uh, we have uh, CPO apa public infrastructure in what call with GP flyover uh, we can uh, change colors at the conditional uh, all 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 we want thank you thank you thank you for a very nice presentation a very interesting one uh, this is a special uh, uh, real real life experience from Jakarta. Uh, I will just uh, summarize for you guys here. ก็ทางทางจาการ์ตานะครับอันนี้ทางผู้แทนในอินโดนีเซียก็เป็นเขาเป็นหน่วยงานเหมือนก็ทมบ้านเรานะครับแต่ดูแลกรุงจาการ์ตาก็มาเล่าให้เราฟังว่าเขาได้เปลี่ยนหลอดไฟเป็น LED มาช่วง10ปีที่ผ่านมาเนี่ยประมาณทั้ง3 0 0 0 0กว่าหลอดนะครับแล้วก็มีการปรับปรุงระบบการทํางานระบบการให้แสงสว่างใหม่นะครับแล้วก็อย่างที่เราเห็นตัวอย่างรูปภาพที่ค่อนข้างสวยงามก็ทํามาได้ทํามาได้ระยะหนึ่งแล้วนะครับแล้วก็มีระบบที่เป็นซิงเกิลแดชบอร์ดนะครับสามารถดูแล้วก็ควบคุมได้ด้วยนะครับก็คิดว่าเป็นตัวอย่างจริงที่ทําจริงที่น่าสนใจระบบของเขาจะมีเมื่อกี้ที่เห็นเนี่ยบอกว่ามีมีตัวที่เป็นการจัดซื้อด้วยเขาเป็นการจัดซื้อในช่วงแรกเนี่ยเหมือนกับรวบรวมรวมเซอร์วิสเอาไว้ด้วยนะครับก็คือผู้ให้บริการเนี่ยทำการซ่อมบํารุงด้วยนะครับแต่ว่าในอนาคตเขาก็มีการเตรียมการว่าจะสามารถซ่อมบำรุงได้เองได้ด้วยนะครับก็ประมาณนี้นะครับ uh, I think we got some uh, time left for a couple of question Any question from the floor? Uh, you can raise your hand and yeah, then over here and microphone will be there. Okay, you can ask any of them. Not not me. Any of them, please go ahead. Hello. Okay. Very good afternoon to all. Uh, my name is Sia from uh, Land Transport Authority Singapore. So, got two questions. Uh, for Ben and uh, Yongliang. Uh, we have been working together for a while. Okay, uh, I think both of you uh, mentioned about dynamic and adaptive lighting, as well as uh, light on demand. Can I know, uh, I mean, has all this uh, so-called smart capability been adopted in uh, overseas country? What are the challenges uh, for the local uh, authorities and the community? Uh, that's the first question. I think uh, Ben also mentions about AIs and all those uh, data collections that helps in the smart lighting perspective. So what other functionality uh, be beside the adaptive uh, controls and all those things that AI can help and uh, so-called do automations and so on and so forth? In the lighting illumination perspective, what other things that we can consider? I'll, I'll go first. Uh, touching upon adaptive lighting or light on demand, um, the multi sensor is not exactly very new, uh, so uh, just so you know, we released it two years ago. Uh, already in Benelux, or uh, sorry, in, in Belgium, in France, in Spain, we have deployed quite many projects, in particular cycling track and pedestrian pathway, where they can, because of the sensor, they can deem the lights very dim, very low, let's say 10%, when there is no activity, nobody in the middle of the night. But the moment there's a person or there's some activity or even a cycling, uh, cyclist going past, then the lights can go up. It's already been adopted and it's well accepted in Europe, in fact. And if you're interested, there are quite some nice videos available online on YouTube. Uh, that said, on adaptive lighting, um, in particular, traffic density adaptive lighting is also a growing trend in many cities or many countries. Uh, I spoke to you earlier, Italy already has mandated it in their road um, standard that all new connected light points needs to have adaptive lighting capability to traffic, that's number one. Next to it, actually, also weather. So there is actually also a combination of both traffic and weather to adapt the light levels accordingly. That already is mandated in Italy. I foresee in the next few years, many other cities, especially the more front-end developed countries, will start to adopt these. Um, I think 
in our part of the world, uh, we've been rather conservative. Right? We've always been thinking about, okay, if we dim the lights, what are the repercussions, you know, stakeholder management in terms of security, in terms of accident management, or even insurance claims, etc. I think at some point, it will move forward and light on demand is critical from that perspective. So if you are able to have light where it's needed, when it is needed, adaptive lighting should be an easy uh, decision to make. Uh, to your second question on AI, uh, maybe Ben want to. Okay, AI is a very, very new field, as I mentioned earlier. So, uh, in Shredder, we did a few case study. Uh, actually, we deployed some uh, reference projects, so uh, in a small scale. So, one of it is in Germany. So, what we did is that uh, we are having an algorithm already in place to interpret the AI, to have this AI uh, capability. So, however, we work with a third-party supplier, with a different platform supplier. Example, I mentioned uh, Google, uh, you can have the traffic data, noise data, or can have your own sensor, but again, uh, you need to have enough data. So, to have that sufficient data, you need to work with somebody who has a platform to supply the data. So, only with uh, data and our alg algorithm, so then we can make sure the uh, system can be intelligent enough to make its own decision. So in the case back to Germany, what they do is uh, they actually put a camera uh, to identify the insect type. <laughs> yes, uh, they're concerned about wildlife. So they identify the insect and they profile them and they catalog the database. And of course, they use a third party database to match the insect type. And the light is able to adapt itself to, example, changing a color temperature so they, they have sufficient data to know that certain insect will react to certain color temperature of light, example, warmer light or cooler light. So they adapt and adjust itself and they're able to have this uh, lighting schedule implemented. Thank you for the question. Uh, just uh, real quick summarize. Uh, ทางทางผู้แทนจากสิงคโปร์ก็ถามว่าเอ่อเวลาเราทําอะแดปทีฟไลติ้งเนี่ยคือมันเป็นการปรับแสงสว่างให้มันเอ่อมืดหรือสว
Okay, I got one quick question for uh, the, my friend from Jakarta. Uh, we quite impressed from, from your presentation that you uh, change a lot of your luminaire uh, over the years and then achieve some success in the, 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 the uh, decrease uh, energy consumption and such. Uh, at the, for the implement of the project, is there any problem, any, any obstruction, uh, uh, the problem that you you're going through uh, the, the budgeting or anything else that can you uh, uh, please kindly share? Yeah. Thank you for the question. Of course, there are several problems we've been facing before. Uh, the, first, the first problem is uh, about our old infrastructure, especially about the cables uh, that make us adopting uh, can we uh, install so many um, luminaires in uh, short times? Uh, so we we make uh, some some research about uh, the technology that time that that were about there are smart system with PLC and also RF and also GSM. So fortunately, uh, there are GSM technology with uh, plug and play that uh, both men say that uh, help us to do the impossible become reality. <laughs> uh, the other problem maybe about uh, how to handle so many vendors with uh, each vendors has all, different also technology. different yeah. system, different dashboard. So then uh, in 2020, we uh, make the single dashboard that uh, our situation. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Ah, pom pom. Today, pom. Ah, pen tap put. Ah, tell. Ask him. Ah, that. 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 คุ้นเคยเหมือนกันนะครับอีกอย่างนึงก็คือว่าเวลาซื้อ LED เนี่ยมันมีหลายเวนเดอร์ด้วยกันแต่ละเวนเดอร์มันแต่ละเวนเดอร์คือแต่ละเจ้าที่เขาขายเนี่ยอย่างวันนี้มา2เจ้าก็เทคโนโลยีแต่ละเจ้าเขาไม่เหมือนกันนะครับก็ต้องทําความเข้าใจแล้วก็ปรับเทคโนโลยีให้มันเหมาะกับกับแต่ละเวนเดอร์ด้วยนะครับก็ใช้เวลาในการศึกษาในการทำความเข้าใจก็พอสมควรเหมือนกันนะครับมี any more question I think we about time to meet the end any more question from the floor Okay, uh, let me wrap this up. As we come to an end to our enlightening uh, workshop on LED technology, we would like, I would like to take a moment to express our gratitude to all of you for your active participation and engagement throughout the session. We hope that today's discussion and insights have provided you valuable knowledge and practical skills that you can apply in your respective areas. Uh, our goal was to shed light on the advancements and benefit of LED technology, especially in the context of highway infrastructure, and we trust that we have achieved that. A special thank to our esteemed speakers and guests whose expertise and experience have greatly enriched our understanding. Your contribution are immensely appreciated. Additionally, I would like to acknowledge the effort of the organizing team from the Department of Highways who have worked tirelessly behind the scene to make this workshop a success. As we move forward, let us continue to embrace innovation, sustainability in our projects. Together, we can make significant strides toward safer and, and more efficient highways. Thank you once again for your time and participation. We look forward to seeing you in our, our future event. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.